The law of sines can help us solve several triangle configurations, but only when we're given or can figure out an angle side opposite pair. But sometimes we don't know an angle side opposite pair. This is the case for SAS and SSS triangles. Fortunately, we have another tool called the law of cosines. I'll prove the law of cosines in video TR-29Z if you're interested. Z videos cover optional material you might find interesting. So I'll just state the law here and we'll begin using it. The law of cosines is basically the Pythagorean theorem with a little adjustment. Here's the Pythagorean theorem, which can be applied only to right triangles. And when the triangle doesn't have a right angle, we must subtract this expression, minus 2ab cosine c. c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. This works for all triangles, whereas the Pythagorean theorem applies only to right triangles. And for the Pythagorean theorem, the left side has to correspond to the hypotenuse. Well, non-right triangles don't have a hypotenuse, and this equation can be applied to any side. We can have c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c, or b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine b, and finally, a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. It looks like impossible gibberish, but let's take a close look at a simple pattern that will help us remember it. We start with the Pythagorean theorem. The two squared sides that we add become factors in the last term with negative 2. And finally, we multiply by the cosine of the angle opposite the isolated side, so they have the same letter. Can you finish the law of cosine patterns with this setup? Minus 2pq times cosine m. The law of cosine includes five side lengths, two are repeated, and one angle, which is the angle opposite the isolated side. So a lowercase letter starts the law of cosines, and the uppercase version of that letter is at the end. I'm just trying to help you remember. I try to encourage you not to memorize things when studying trig, but the law of cosines and the law of sines you should memorize. The law is so similar to the Pythagorean theorem, I want to show you what happens when we apply it to a right triangle. From the Pythagorean theorem, we know that c squared equals a squared plus b squared. The law of cosines it works for any triangle, so it should work for this one. Can you finish the law of cosines? Minus 2ab cosine c. Let's use a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. We start with 5 squared equals 3 squared plus 4 squared, the Pythagorean theorem. The law of cosines adds one more term. Can you plug in the numbers? Minus 2 times 3 times 4 times cosine 90 degrees. The cosine of 90 degrees is 0, so the last expression becomes 0. So for right triangles, the law of cosines is equivalent to the Pythagorean theorem because cosine 90 degrees equals zero. Let's adjust the triangle so that the right angle is now slightly acute, say 80 degrees. Let's calculate the length of side C. We'd expect the length to be shorter than five. So let's see, C squared equals three squared plus four squared minus two times three times four times cosine 80. This is 9 plus 16 minus 2 times 3 times 4 is 24 times cosine 80 is 0 0.17365. Again, we're assuming our given measurements are precise and we can carry several decimal places. C squared is 20.832, so C equals 4.564. So as expected, narrowing the angle reduced the opposite length because C is less than 5. Now let's try a slightly obtuse triangle with an angle of 100 degrees. The numbers are similar, except cosine 100 degrees is negative. So when we subtract a negative number from 2 times 3 times 4, c squared gets bigger. With a 100 degree angle, c equals 5.401. Widening the angle increases the opposite length. Let me show you how the law of cosines is used. Suppose we have a triangle where we know the length of two of its sides and we also know either the blue angle between them for an SAS configuration or the blue third side, SSS. 
we use the law of cosines to find the missing blue. We know one, we can find the other. Here we have two sides and the angle between them. We're going to use the law of cosines to find the length of this side, x. We're going to start the law of cosines equation with x, and we're going to end it with the cosine of the angle opposite x, like this. We start by adding the squares of the other two sides, like the Pythagorean theorem. Then we subtract two times their product, multiplied by the cosine. The missing side is 4.76 units long. We can now use the law of sines to find the other angles. Here's a triangle where we know the three sides, but no angles. We can't use the law of sines since we have no angle side opposite pairs. So we'll use the law of cosines and pick an angle to solve. This one that I'll label theta. The law of cosines starts with the side opposite theta and ends with the cosine of theta. And we're always solving for one or the other. Let's plug in our known values into the law of cosines equation. The Pythagorean theorem part and the adjustment part. We're going to solve for theta. We end up with cosine theta equals 0 0.6210. So we use arc cosine to find the angle whose cosine is 0 0.6210 and the answer is 51.6 degrees. The other two angles are found with the law of sines. Here's a bit more practice in recognizing and setting up law of cosines equations. Here we're given two sides, g sub one and g sub two. Let's say g stands for given, and the angle between them, g sub theta. We don't have an angle side opposite pair, so we know we need to use the law of cosines to get one. We'll call the opposite side x, and build the equation using the given angle and its opposite side x like this. The rest is algebra. Here we're given three sides, so we have no angle side opposite pair. We simply choose an angle to solve using the law of cosines with its opposite side. I chose this one and called it theta sub two because it's opposite given to or g sub two. Write the law of cosines equation with these two at the beginning and end and do the algebra to solve for theta sub two. Then you'll have an angle side opposite pair. The law of sines and the law of cosines are both straightforward math equations, simple to solve once they're set up. The law of sines is probably a little faster to use. So if your angle has an angle side opposite pair, you don't have to use the law of cosines. Use it only when you don't have an angle side opposite pair. Video TR-29 has a few more sample triangles to solve. You can pause before I set up the equations and show the answers so you can check your work without stepping through the algebra. In video TR-29Z, I'll prove the law of cosines in case you're interested. In the next video, TR-30, I'll provide an overview of what's sometimes called the ambiguous case, the pain in the SSA triangle.